Hello, everyone. Welcome to Lay's Real Talk. I'm Lay. Recently, Reddit versus Wall Street has been dominating the headlines. It started with an investment instrument called short selling, which makes money when a company's stock price is estimated to fall. A short seller borrows the stock and sells it at the current price. When the stock price goes down, the seller buys the stock back at the lower price and returns it. So he makes money by selling high now and buying low later. But if the stock price doesn't fall as predicted, the short seller loses money, and the higher the price goes up, the more money he loses. And this is what happened when a group of individual investors decided to challenge Wall Street hedge funds, who have been shorting GameStop, a game retailer in shopping malls. Reddit members joined together and bid the stock price of GameStop to go up 1,600% in a couple of weeks, squeezing some Wall Street hedge funds into losing tens of billions of dollars in a matter of days. The entire event is certainly eye-opening. I think it's quite significant. Its impact is far-reaching, and here are some of the takeaways. The first is that the little guys are winning now. It's a classic David and Goliath story. A lot of people in this country are feeling down and frustrated that their voices are not heard. The Reddit GameStop story is a great encouragement to them. They see that when people put their voices together and do something they believe in, they can move mountains and turn rivers. Nobody thought that a group of online day traders could force Wall Street giants to lose tens of billions of dollars. Individually, they cannot accomplish this. With the help of the internet, they pulled a virtual French Revolution against Wall Street. Speaking of the internet, we come to our second takeaway, which is the big tech companies got a wake-up call. The big tech companies have become too complacent. They think they have carte blanche in censoring and silencing people. The Reddit versus Wall Street fiasco made them realize that the little guys are powerful in using their platforms, and you can't just shut them down. The third takeaway is that it has shifted the dynamics in politics. When the trading app Robinhood suspended the buying of GameStop stocks in an attempt to stop the Reddit crowd, and save Wall Street. AOC, Ted Cruz, and Donald Trump Jr. all reacted. AOC, one of the most liberal representatives in Congress, tweeted, This is unacceptable. And the conservative Republican senator from Texas, Ted Cruz, replied, Fully agree. Donald Trump Jr. also tweeted, This is what a rigged system looks like. So for the first time in the longest while, the three of them have agreed on something. Traditional Chinese culture believe that when there are positives, there must be negatives too. This is deeply rooted in the Chinese theory of two opposite forces that contradict and coexist, such as yin and yang. So what are the negatives that will come out of this? I think we're due for a major market recalibration and correction. Perhaps the Reddit GameStop incident is sending a signal. If you look at history, short sale mania has been the precursor to a number of major economic crises. Let's first take a look at how short sales started in history. The first short sale happened on the very first stock of the world, the Dutch East India Company in 1609 by Isaac Le Maire. Le Maire had been one of the Dutch East India Company's directors, but his dispute with others over money got ugly. Le Maire was cast out of the company. For revenge, he came up with a plan to take down the company and make money at the same time by placing a bet that the stock price would drop. In order to drive the price down, he started spreading rumors. As the rumors spread, the stock price began to drop. Le Maire won the bet and made a lot of money. As soon as the first short sale came out, it was banned, because a year later, Dutch authorities imposed a ban on short selling. 
In the end, La Mer lost about 10 to $20 million, uh, which is in today's money. He went into exile and died in a small village where he lived. That's how short selling started it. Let's now take a look at how it has triggered many economic crises. In June 1772, Neil James Fordyce and Down, a London banking house collapsed after one of its partners had been shorting East India Company stock on a massive scale. Now, this is not the same Dutch company. This is the British East India Company. He shorted 1 million pounds, which is about $170 million today, and was using customer deposits to cover losses. The bank's collapse caused the collapse of almost all private banks in Scotland and the liquidity crisis in London and Amsterdam, the two major banking centers of the world at the time. In modern times, George Soros is known as the man who took down the Bank of England by shorting the currency, the pound sterling. September 16, 1992 was known as the Black Wednesday. It was the day the British government was forced to pull the pound from the European exchange rate mechanism because its central bank was unable to defend itself from an attack by George Soros. Soros amassed a short position of more than $10 billion worth of pounds sterling and made an estimated $1 billion in profit as a result. The British government lost a lot of money and Britain was thrown into a recession afterward. In addition to the British recession of the 1990s, short selling has been the cause of the 2008 financial crisis and most notably the 1929 stock market crash. The person who made the most money from short sales is Jesse Lauriston Livermore. At one time, he was one of the richest people in the world. During the financial crisis of 1907, Livermore made $1 million in a single day from short sales. His mentor, J.P. Morgan, who had bailed out the entire New York Stock Exchange during the crash, asked him to stop short selling activities. Livermore agreed and ended up profiting from the market rebound, increasing his net worth to $3 million. But he didn't keep his promise. In early 1929, he amassed huge short positions, using more than a hundred stockbrokers to hide what he was doing. By the spring, he was down over $6 million on paper. However, when the market crashed in October that year, he netted approximately $100 million, and that's over $100 billion today. Many people blamed Livermore for the market crash, and he received death threats. Five years later, in 1934, he lost his fortune and filed bankruptcy for the third time with listed assets of 84000 and debts of $2.5 million. Six years later, in 1940, he committed suicide. Thirty-five years later, his son also committed suicide. His grandson also killed himself. Short selling was invented over 400 years ago by a man who wanted to take revenge against his old company. It's not an honorable means for making money and has caused great suffering, including those who practice it. Many who were heavily involved didn't end well. Its ethics have been questioned and debated. These are the lessons we can learn from history, my friend. Be wise and choose well. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and share my videos, and I'll see you next time.